What's up guys, let's talk a little bit about parietes. Parietes are rarely known by their common name of jewel coral. For some corals, their scientific name tends to stick. Parietes are a fairly uncommon SPS in this hobby, especially compared to Acropora and Montipora, for example, which are seemingly ubiquitous. Now the operative phrase here is in the hobby. In the wild, Parietes is much, much more common. It's a coral that's found all over the Caribbean and the Pacific. In fact, once when I was diving, I've seen firsthand fields and fields of stony corals, pretty much as far as the eye can see, and all of it was parietes, or seemingly all of it was parietes. It's just not that frequently collected. In our tanks, they do look a little bit different than in the wild. Parietes is often contracted tightly to its skeleton like you see here, giving it that gemstone pattern across its body. In the wild, specimens tend to have greater polyp extension and look almost furry like Pocillopora. One interesting thing about parietes that separates it from other small polyp stony corals is that it develops commensal relationships with these Christmas tree worms, also known as bismal worms. I've heard that these worms are hard to keep alive, but in my experience that hasn't really been the case. They've not only survived, but on this piece we've had for close to a year, they've really grown in size. I think that one of the keys to keeping these worms and the corals happy is water flow. Parietes are commonly found in shallow areas with crashing surge flow. I have not come across a system in home aquariums that comes even close to simulating the force of those waves on this coral. If you plan to keep parietes, I would recommend giving it strong, turbulent flow whenever possible. As far as lighting goes, it is a tad bit trickier. There's both shallow and deep water varieties of this SPS. So where did this one come from? I really don't know, and that's part of the problem that we aquarists face. Not too many of us have the opportunity to meet the people that collect the corals that we actually see in this hobby. As it turns out, I have actually met the collector of this particular coral. He came all the way from Australia to visit, long story, but he was here. And the topic never actually came up, so again, I have no clue where exactly this coral came from. The best advice that I can give on placement with regard to light is to start it off in relatively low light and allow it to adjust. After a week or so, you can try to move it to brighter areas of the aquascape, but keep a close eye on it. If it starts to bleach, it will do so quickly, so be ready to move it back down into the shadier parts of your tank. Giving a coral too much light is far worse than giving it not quite enough. As for feeding, the spiral plumes of the bismal worms are used for both feeding and respiration. We try to feed the worms some of the cloudy supernate from thawing frozen food, as well as a mix of dry planktonic foods like reefroids and coral frenzy that are kind of designed more for filter feeding inverts. I'm not 100% sure that they're eating it, but then again, things seem to be going well, so I'm not going to jinx it. One last observation I have on parietes is that they tend to be one of the slowest growing small polyp stony corals that I've come across. In fact, I can't think of too many corals with slower growth rates. They share so many things with other SPS like Montipora, Stylophora, and Pocillopora, but when it comes to growth, it's far more modest. All right, that pretty much does it for parietes. Commensal relationships on the reef are some of the most interesting things about this hobby, and this is another example to add to that list. It adds just that extra little bit of movement and complexity to the display. I love this stuff. All right, thanks for watching you guys, and take care.